Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and I'm here for my weekly update. It's Monday, I guess October 16th. I only remember that because yesterday was the 15th when Frosted Pumpkins Clue Number 2 came out for their greetings from the park. <laughs> Stitch along. So it's the 16th, um, already halfway through October. I'm just getting, starting to watch the videos people made at the very beginning of October, so... I'm about a week and a half behind still chipping away at it. I don't want to miss anybody. I love everybody's videos. Um, I am starting to get a little bit ruthless, I guess I should say. If somebody's projects or style is not like super engaging, I, I am going to unsubscribe just a couple people just because there's only so much time in the day and... If I haven't like made a connection with somebody and they're, the things they're stitching don't really resonate with me either, then I don't necessarily want to spend my time on their videos when there's a bunch of other videos that I would love to watch and love to stay updated with and love to connect with, with those people. So it's just kind of how it is when there's hundreds and hundreds of awesome videos out there. Um, I don't have hundreds and hundreds of hours in my day to watch videos. Um, so I'm chipping away. I, I will either thumbs up or comment on all of them. I have little notes by the side of my stitchy spot that I'll write little, as I'm watching a video and stitching, um, I'll write comments, like one or two word comments of what to comment on when I'm done watching the video and then I'll go in and you know make all my comments so be like oh I gotta say something about that oh I gotta say something about that so um that's been fun I also try to watch videos like when I'm folding laundry or making school lunches so just trying to trying to find time for that so um it is fun so hope I think I'm up to people were saying October 3rd maybe so I'm still a little ways behind, but, you know, almost two weeks. Hopefully, um, hopefully I can get cut, closer to cut up soon. There's people who have weekly videos that, I, there's two of them waiting for me. So, <clears throat> I, that, it just feels too far behind for me. So, I'm hoping to get caught up more. Yesterday and today I had some extra stitching time. Um, unexpectedly, my daughter got sick. So that's a sad thing, but it means that we didn't have, I didn't, I didn't go to church yesterday. I'm not going grocery shopping today. There's different things that I normally do outside the home that I can't do when I got a sick little one. So, um, that meant more stitching and more floss tube. So there's a silver lining. I'm very sad that she's sick, but I have had a little bit more time to stitch. So take it where you can get it, I guess. Um. I have just a little bit of haul today. <clears throat> I was looking, um, last week I talked about finding beads for the heirloom nativity sampler because all the beads called for in this, not all the beads, a lot of the beads called for in this are from a company called SJ Designs. And I hadn't actually done a Google search when I asked about it, so I probably could have found this on my own. They do have a website with where you can buy their products directly. However, a um a comment, a commenter suggested the Stony Creek website. So I went over there and the prices were a little bit more reasonable than directly from the manufacturer, so I thought I would, you know, fill my cart, see how much it was. <clears throat> Something I found with their Stony Creek website is they have a, f a flat shipping of at least for the states for three fifty. It won't go any lower than that. But they calculate it based on weight, not um, price. Uh, so one two three stitch and other places will calculate your shipping costs based on how much you're paying for your the you know, subtotal of your products that are in your cart. Stony Creek does it based on weight, which is awesome for something like beads because I just kept loading beads in my cart and the shipping did not go up. 
I ended up getting $40 worth of beads, kitted up completely three different projects, and it still was $350, and I probably could have done more, I just didn't have anything else to kit up. Um, so that was awesome, and I, um, some of the prices of the actual unit price, like the bead packs, were slightly cheaper on 123 Stitch, but since this Stony Creek had all the SJ Designs beads and uh, all the Mill Hill beads and the little charms that I need. So it had everything I needed um, so I wouldn't have to make two orders and two sets of shipping. So I just went ahead and got everything at Stony Creek. Super, super fun. So this is kind of, um, this is my bead haul. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling my husband, this is what $40 worth of beads looks like, honey. Um, so, I have... I'll show you. So, first off, for the um, Nativity Sampler are all of these um, SJ Designs beads. There's little hearts, Mother of Pearl hearts. There's big pearl beads, little bronze beads, and little clear beads. They also called for, um, oh, and these, no, those are for something else. Um, they also called for this, a star charm and a heart charm. And I think, I think these beads, one pack of these beads is for the um, heirloom nativity sampler. And then I also needed three sets of beads for the Dragon Ride by Teresa Wensler I'm doing for my middle son. Um, and sh he needed another one of this color. So this package is for Heirloom Nativity Sampler. This package is for Dragon Ride. And Dragon Ride also took these purple ones and these teal ones. And they're all petite beads, which was really fun. No, not those ones. Yes, those ones. I'll figure it out eventually, but I'm pretty sure... No, you're right. That's not right because they're all petites. So purple and this one up here, this dark teal. These two and this one are for Dragon Ride. And then the rest of these are for Stargazer, which I mentioned before uh, last time that I want to try to find some dark fabric for this and do a, a little bit of a color conversion. I want to do her jacket in dark burgundy and the ribbons in gold. And I noticed there's some little um, drapey garlands on the edge of her dress that have like a, they're called champagne, the color of beads that are called for there. And there's these dark beads in here that match the jacket. The champagne beads I replaced with these gold beads to, so that can kind of complement her ribbons, which I was going to do in gold. And then these dark garnet beads, not garnet, they're... um. I think they're like a dark mauve color, actually. But they're really pretty burgundy colors. What I did, kind of flew by the seat of my pants. I pulled the, the DMCs for this, um, for her dress, and then just started winging it for the um, burgundies to make sure they would kind of match. Because this dress color I thought I would keep. And then went ahead and picked the DMC, the bead color strictly from the computer screen, which I knew was fraught with potential disaster, um, to pick this color. I think it's going to be gorgeous. And worst case, I love these beads. So worst case, if the colors that I chose, I wrote down my little, you know, a couple little pencil marks for my conversion. Um, if the colors I chose don't match the beads, I'll fix the colors to match the beads. So I'm not worried about that. The rest of these, these big ones, these ones, all these white ones, and yeah, these blue ones. Those are all for Stargazer also. In the sky, the stars up here. And the white ones will be down here in her dress. Um, so that was a lot of fun. I, I received a few... Um, suggestions for fabric for Stargazer because the Midnight, the one called Midnight, I think, is from Lakeside Linens on 123 Stitch, was very expensive. 
I'm used to spending like five to twelve dollars for a fat quarter of fabric because I am a cheapskate. I don't have any problems <laughs> saying that or admitting that. I am cheap and I'm always looking for a bargain. So spending $38 on a piece of fabric was probably not ever going to happen. Um, I received wonderful recommendations. Probably my favorite is X2 Designs. Um, Stitch Stitchy Mom, Kristen, recommended that one called Midnight Sky. That one is still $24, but it's got $6 shipping. So, and I don't know what else I would buy. Like... I kind of feel like if I'm going to pay shipping, that much shipping, I would need to find another fabric. And there's another one she has that's pretty, but I don't necessarily have a reason to buy it. <laughs> and since I'm already super frugal, I'm like, ah, I don't know if I can justify that. So what I decided to do, and worst case, if my experiment fails, I'll probably go and buy Extra Designs fabric because it was pretty. So I'll probably just justify it. But what I'm going to try to do is dye my own fabric. And I've never wanted to do this before because I'm not a fan of modeling. And I know it takes some skill to get the look right. And it's messy. I don't even let my kids paint at home very often because I just hate cleaning up messes. <clears throat> so never dyeing was never never interested me. Um, however, with this conundrum of trying to find the right fabric and realizing that there really isn't a good fabric that's inexpensive, I thought, well, I will try it. And I'll just do a straight up dye. I'm not going to try anything fancy. It'll be diluted in water so it gets a complete, you know, solid change of color. I bought like a, a pan to try to like keep it from ruining pots and pans that I have for cooking because I don't know how that all goes. And I bought some dye. I, I still need fixative, dye fixative, um, to help seal the color. When I was at Michael's, that's where I got this, the um, dye fixative was sold out. So I'm going to go to Joanne's to find that and to get some fabric. I'm, I'm fine using 32 count MCG. MCG textiles linen that linen the 32 can't linen doesn't bother me in that brand their even weave is quite not even um, and but even that I've used many times um, but I don't mind their linen I've stitched other Mirabilia's on their linen and I've been okay with it um, so I'll get some linen there um, something I Something I was curious about, I got the color denim blue. If anyone has used all the different blues and could give me a suggestion, the navy seemed a little bit too dark. And I know the midnight one I showed last week was very dark, the fat fabric on one, two, three stitch. But I kind of think that might be too dark. So I got this one, which was the next, next darkest color. Um, the only other blue they had at Michael's was royal blue and it seemed too bright. Um, this, I saw one that was, so I don't know, I saw one that was, um, evening blue on their website that I think Joann's carries, so if anybody knows, that one seemed like it was even lighter than this though, so if anybody knows what these look like when they're, like, put together on fabric, on linen specifically, if they think denim blue would be a good one for a night sky or if I should try a different one. I haven't opened it yet so I could return it. I don't think I will need to do a combination but we'll see. Um, <clears throat> I watched a little two minute tutorial last night from the RIT company of just a basic dye process and it looks easy. So wish me luck. <laughs> <laughs> Never done anything like that before. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm pretty easy to please when it comes to fabric. So I'm hoping that whatever whatever happens will be fine. So I'll show you whenever, uh, whenever I get the courage. I need to get to Joann's for one to get the fixative. 
and the fabric. So I'm waiting for making sure I have coupons because I'm a cheapskate. The the die was a lot more than I expected it to be. It was four fifty, which in the general scheme of things is not that expensive. But generally, I like to always use coupons and stuff. So it was I think twenty five percent off because I had a coupon for the. Oh, I forgot I have something to show you. Just a minute. Okay, so I remembered the reason I was at Michael's in the first place was to get a frame for a royal holiday. So this is the frame I picked out. It's a 14 by 18. And she will just fit in here. Like, she will be like just not quite touching on the top and the bottom. I think there will be a margin of maybe like one square or something. Um, the other queens I have are on this same brand. This is a Michaels store brand kind of thing, Lifestyles frames. And I really like them. Like, they're cheap, but they look nice. Like, they're made out of wood or wood-ish product. <laughs> and I put a lot of my Mirabilia's in these frames. Um, my Autumn and Spring Queens are in this brand of frame but they are in a 16 by 20 which is a little bit bigger and I was hoping to get a 16 by 20 for Royal Holiday so it would completely match um, but they apparently have stopped carrying brown in that size so the only 16 by 20s they had were black and I don't think that would look good for her she does she has dark brown in her she does not have black so um but I noticed they had a at the very last minute, I was kind of discouraged. At the last minute, I noticed they had a brown one in this size. So I was, I had Royal Holiday with me, and I was, um, I measured. I was like, hey, that would actually fit. So she'll be a slightly smaller frame, but when she's done, she has a home. So I'm excited about that. The other thing I wanted to show you was Stony Creek has a free pattern every month on their website if you're ordering things anyways, because you still have to pay shipping. Um, so I threw that in my cart. I like the cute little one um, for winter, which would be January's free pattern. So who knows, maybe I'll have things to kit up that I receive for Christmas and I can go pick up the January one. <laughs> so those are kind of cute. They're spring, they're all snowmen, which is strange because the only one that really makes sense to me is this one because that's when snowmen are existing in real life. But it, they're cute. Um, so that was my haul. Just kidding, I have one more. Let's see. Not, I didn't pay for it. I was, my, um, pack that I saw at my LNS Queen Anne Stitches last week or two weeks ago, whenever I was there last, I talked about her last week. Um, she recommended Kelly Bell Stitches, who makes floss tube videos. So I went to go see her, say, watch Kelly Bell, and her, the first video that popped up in chronologically where I was watching was her whip parade. And she showed this one, which is called His Name is Jesus, and it's by Joyful Expressions, and it's a free chart. Isn't that amazing? Um, I love this type of thing with the names of Jesus or names of God. Um, they have a variety. These two, um, color schemes are given to you in DMC colors, blues and berry. Um, but it calls for basically three different shades of color. So something I was thinking of, I've been wondering, on the lookout for patterns to use those, um, color and cotton flosses that I received from Ann P for my birthday and I'll be using some of them in the little teacher gift I'll be doing for my daughter's preschool teacher but this I thought hey I could use some of those for this and that would be really pretty so I'll pick three and I haven't gone to the trouble of looking for them yet because I don't think this will be a start in the new year it'll maybe the following year but it might be I've already got 10 things kitted up that I want to start um, either the end of this year or into next year. So this might have to be added to that. 
just because I can't control myself. But the, I'll pick out three pretty um, color and cottons and make that. So that'll be fun. But yeah, if you want that chart, it's on her on the Joyful Expressions website, and I'll link it below. You sign up for their newsletter, um, and then they send you a link to the pattern. And they have other patterns too. So that was my haul. And let's see. Last week I showed my finish of November, and I had something I forgot to mention. This color, which color? The color that's this one right here, that's this, these darker stems and the accents, that is Otter Creek from General Arts, and I don't didn't have Otter Creek. <clears throat> they called for a blend, um, so probably the the actual General Arts floss was probably a mixture of the two colors, so I can't do blends one over one, so what I chose to do is I did one of the colors was the this stem and this stem and then the other bluer color was like this is a really dark green and the other bluer version of the blend was the leaves so that's what I chose to do to account for that blend and I think there was another month that had a blend and I shared how I um, how I accommodated the one over one in that case too. So if you're doing these one over one, that's just what I chose to do as an idea. Um, or you could always pick one or the other and see how it goes. I think I hear my kitty making noises. Um, so I was working this past weekend on Frosted Pumpkin. And Saturday, I managed to finish Clue 1, and Sunday, Clue 2 came out. So now there's four postcards. This one is the Everglades in Florida, maybe? And Saguaro National Park, which is in Arizona. And my initial thought on these was a little bit underwhelming, um, but I think it might have to do with their picture is kind of washed out. Um... And I'm printing this in toner save mode, so it's already a little washed out, but even when I was looking at it on my monitor, my computer screen, like, it already, it looked like it was too faded. And I know from having stitched the first two that they're not, it's not this faded in real life. Like, it's quite bright and vibrant. So I think they'll look better in real life. So I'm excited to actually get them stitched and to see how that looks. Um... But here I am. I managed to get um, the first clue all the way finished and then the first color on both of their skies started for clue two. So I probably would have shown you a picture of where it was last time because I forgot to say that, but there it is. So I did this blue and you could see little drapey bits in here. Because these Everglade trees are like jungle trees with stuff that's dripping off them. It reminds me of the trees in Minecraft that are in the jungle biomes. If anybody plays Minecraft or has kids that play Minecraft. Um, that's what that reminded me of. There'll be a sun in the background. And here's the little girl. These are her pink cheeks. And then this will be a cardinal and there'll be a a sunset. So the sun's here and this is this is the little girl or the they're both girls this time, the park rangers. So um that was kind of a fun start. And this one, Ann P was mentioning that she really liked this one, maybe as a standalone. And my sister was mentioning that she thought it looked very Halloween-y. And I because it's got orange and it's at night. So that was kind of an interesting observation. So it's, this is pretty cute. It's go, coming along. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Plugging away on that on the weekends. I have a little bit, I have a little bit more I did on my temperature garden. But other than that, it's been royal holiday and nothing but royal holiday. So, and it will probably be nothing but royal holiday for the next 
month. So just be prepared for that <laughs> and not expect a whole bunch of variety of whips from me for a little bit. But I did do one more flower on my temperature garden yesterday. And so here's where it was last time. And here it is now. So one little bit crazy flower for October. One cool day, one hot, hot day. It was like 96 that day. Temp summer was, uh, just didn't want to say goodbye, I guess. So, um, <clears throat> I think there's another hot day in this flower too that's coming up. So that's where she's at. He, she, that's where my garden is at right now. Um, I find it a little bit hard to pull this out when I'm right in the middle of working on Royal Holiday because I don't want to stop. Um, but I have found it's a nice one to do while watching TV. So if I bring it out for during the football game on Sunday or for something else. It's a nice one for that. So um, I'll keep going on it. And who knows, I might I might pull it out midweek this week just because I don't want to get behind. And I may get to a good stopping point on Royal Holiday pretty soon because I'm almost done with her dress. Like the actual dress dress, not her cape, but... Here's Royal Holiday, and here's where she was last time, <clears throat> and here she is now. Um, so, I worked on her dress, and I was not, I didn't know if I would be able to finish the tan part this past week and sure enough I didn't but then I ended up with um, again some more time yesterday and managed to finish off cuz cuz the the pumpkin frosted pumpkin clue comes out at noon on the 15th so Sunday morning I had finished the first clue I was expecting to be in church couldn't go to church because my daughter was sick so I ended up with the morning to stitch so I finished all of the DMC in this tan dress and I think I got this row of Krennic done. I do short uh, like maybe eight, eight inches of Krennic at a time just so it doesn't start falling apart. And then this morning I did one a couple lengths of this dark Krennic. So all the dark Krennic is done in the dress. There's a little bit more down here. Um, so all I have left to do in the dress part is the rest of the gold, light gold krennic, and the beads. And then I'll move over here. Um, so that's fun. I am loving Needle Minder, Shelly. I love it. I switch it back and forth between this one and the Frosted Pumpkin one when I'm at home. And now I need another one for my travel piece. Because I'll be stitching in the car on my secret stitch and have to put my needle through my fabric like an animal. <laughs> I am spoiled now. So I'm gonna have to find another needle minder. I have a brooch that my aunt gave me ages ago that the pin broke. Like I think in in transit, like in the in the mail, it the pin broke off of it and I kept thinking, well maybe I could try to fix it. I don't wear brooches anyways, but it's pretty um, <clears throat> so I was thinking of making that into a needle minder, and I have some magnets I bought, but I don't know that they're the right magnets. They're not the super strong earth magnets, and they're black, so I'm kind of nervous now to think about putting those on my fabric that might leave marks. So, um, if any of you know if you can buy the nice silver magnets, um, in a store like Hobby Lobby or Joann's or Michael's that or even a hardware store maybe Lowe's or Home Depot we've got all of those around here that would be fantastic because I'm, ass I'm assuming if I find them online I'd have to buy a whole bunch of them and you know 
pay shipping or whatnot. Maybe Amazon would have them, but you'd probably have to buy a bunch. And I, I would need two, you know, one for each side. <laughs> so, um, if anybody knows where you can find a small quantity of those to make a needle minder, or even with buttons, I have lots of buttons, so even if the brooch doesn't work, if it's too thick or something. So, that would be fun. So you've created a monster, Shelly. <laughs> I like I like needle minders now. Um, going forward, for plans, of course I've been planning. I can't seem to keep myself away from planning. I have my spreadsheets. I keep making more like little pages to my spreadsheet because I have more ideas. I have, I'm planning to do full coverage fanatics in 2018. I'm Now I've decided to do Year of Whips because I have heard that this year in Year of Whips, a page finish on a full coverage piece counts as a finish as long as the full design is more than six pages, which almost all of my full coverage pieces are more than six pages. Um, so I have several full coverage projects that have unfinished pages. So I can probably plug in a whole bunch of those that I'll be stitching for full coverage fanatics anyways and get full page credit um, with Year of Whips. So I have a handful of full coverage pieces that could qualify and another handful of real, you know, actual finishes that I could do that will be small finishes um, to come up with 15. And I think you only need to finish half to qualify for like, I think there's maybe a drawing at the end. Um, so I have come up with 15 that I think are doable. Um, a few of them are maybe a stretch, but I think, I think I might be able to get close to 15 in 2018. So I figure why not? I'll try that. So in January you should see a Year of Whips video because they require you to submit a video or photo album of your Year of Whips pieces to show how far you are now and what you hope to accomplish to finish or finish them. So um, you'll see something like that in January because clearly things could change between now and then that I maybe I'll switch projects around. Um, throughout my planning, I've been thinking about <clears throat> using all of my whips and I have, I think like 47 right now and that's a lot, and I know several of them will be done before the end of the year, but trying to find room for all of them throughout the year was kind of discouraging because thinking about I've only, I'll only get to work on, you know, this project once all of next year, and I won't get to see it again until the, the following year if I stick to my plan, which you all know plans change, but Theoretically, if I stick to my plan, <clears throat> a lot of my projects would maybe only get a day during a like Olympics challenge or a week with a full coverage challenge. And that was kind of a sad thought. So Ann P suggested in a comment that maybe I could give some of my whips, put them in timeout just for the year <clears throat> so that I can... There goes my kitty. I don't know if you can hear that. She came skittering around the corner and then ran up the stairs. <laughs> she has where she runs on the tile, sometimes like a cartoon character where she, you know, it's anyways. If you have a cat, sometimes you've probably seen that. Um, so she suggested putting half of my whips in timeout. And I, that idea actually really, really clicked with me because as much as I want to try to love each of my pieces next year, I really am feeling more like chipping away at them and starting to finish some of them. And there's no way that any of them would get done if I only spend a short amount of time next year on them. So that thought had been discouraging. So a lot of them are old anyways. They've been in my box for years already. So they're not actively screaming at me. So most of the ones I'm going to put in timeout are old and they'll just come out later. Like if I, 
make some progress on some and feel like I'm at good stopping points or they're finished, I can maybe pull some more out of timeout before the end of the year. Um, but just the thought that I could have two or three weeks on each one versus one or half, you know, one day or one week, two or three weeks is a lot more encouraging. Um, another thing Jesse Marie suggested in a comment, she's thinking about maybe doing a quarterly timeout, like where she'll pick a set of projects for each quarter and rotate through them so that she, cause she tried a yearly timeout and kind of got, um, discouraged with it partly part way through this year because she kept missing some of the ones that were in timeout. So she was going to think of maybe trying a quarterly one. Um, so then she could reevaluate every quarter, which ones were in timeout. And that actually has some appeal as well. I already went through all my whips and organized year of whips and full coverage fanatics. Um, with the pared down list of whips and I have a list that's just full coverage for or just 2018 whips um which I think I am keeping like 11 full coverage for fancy ladies and I think there's maybe 10 or like 8 to 10 regular ones there's also 8 to 10 new starts on that list so take that <laughs> with a grain of salt I guess but I'm tempted to maybe try a quarterly plan and see what that looks like. Potentially that would mean fewer projects even still, but more more progress on them. I don't know. Maybe I'll do what, what Jesse did this year and I'll do a full-on year timeout and then next year I'll do a quarterly one. I don't know. I'm still kind of thinking about that and when I go in there and play in my spreadsheets, it's I spend a lot of time and a lot of thinking, but it's so much fun. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, at this point, I'm still just going to focus on Royal Holiday going forward. I'm not going to try to get my Chatelaine in at all in October. I just want to get this lady done. I want to get her done. So, um, and I think I will be happier doing other projects once she's done. Um, I won't feel guilty being like, oh, what if this time is the time I could have been using to get her done, um, but I was using it on something else. So I'm going to focus on her. Hopefully, maybe sometime in November, she can be done, and then I'll move on to other things. I'll get back out my Chatelaine. I can start the Heirloom Nativity Sampler and start working on some other some other whips, too. And hopefully my Twisted Band Sampler will be started in December. And I was thinking of starting Stargazer for Stitch Mania. And I have a couple other ideas for Stitch Mania. So many fun things. Maybe at the end of the year I'll share... Well, I guess with my Year of Whips video too. There will probably be a wrap-up video at the end of the year. What I did this year and what I'm hoping to do next year. So... <clears throat> I guess I've rambled long enough. Um, I hope you enjoy what you're stitching and enjoy what you're planning, even if you don't carry out those plans. Sometimes it's fun to just plan. And happy stitching. Bye.